The Raptors just keep on buzzing as they hit the road, taking on the Pacers. Obviously, they won back-to-back -back games on home court. You hit the road for the three-game roadie. And it starts in Indy. And that happened last night. You guys are probably wondering, well, where was the video last night? Well, obviously, you guys know I, it's Halloween. It's a Saturday night. What do you, I mean, you know, you guys can put two and two together there. And I told you guys yesterday that, or a couple days ago, that I might not get the opportunity to do the video last night. Obviously, that wasn't that, that was the case, and I did not get a chance to. And here we are, though, talking about an incredible Raptor game yesterday. And we've been saying that really all year long. They win 97-94 over the Indiana Pacers in Indy. And the Raptors are now 4-3 on the season. No Pascal Siakam, no Utah Watanabe. And the Raptors are 4-3 and three on the year. And Scotty Barnes is exceeding everybody's expectations. We'll get to him a little bit later on. But the Raptors, they don't start out great. And but the, 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 Again, the consistency on the defensive end is the reason this Raptor squad continues to, continues to fly. I believe both teams were on the second night of a back-to-back -back today. The Raptors obviously playing last night and having to travel to Indiana. So it was, it was, it was going to be a tough one. It was going to be a tough one. I believe they played a back-to-back. -back. Either way, they go out there and they get the W. And it seems to be a recurring theme. That first quarter where you really, that neither team gets much offense going. Raptors lose that first quarter 25-22, but you're only down by three at the end of one. It's not a big deal. We go to the second quarter and uh, the Raptors win it. But again, the offense, not really anywhere to be found for either team. 24-22 after two quarters of play. And then you go to halftime, Raptors have scored a total of 46 points. They're down by one, I believe 47-46. At the at halftime, you're right there. I mean, 47 40, basically a tie game going into halftime on the road, second night of a back to back. And as we talked about the last time we played a back to back, the second half is always so damn tough. And I believe both teams are on the second night of a back to back, so you're, you're kind of excused there. But in that sec, in that third quarter, neither team gets any offense going. I mean, 21 19 in the quarter with the Raptors defense. Keeping them in this game. And we talked about it in the season preview. We talked about it in the preseason preview. Throughout the preseason games. And throughout all the games so far this year. Offensively, we're not sure what we're going to get from this Raptors squad night in, night out. right? But what you do know is you're going to get defensive intensity every single night. And they gave it to us yesterday. In that fourth quarter, both teams all of a sudden find some offense. And it was a wild end of this game. You know, and Gary Trent Jr., who ended up with a total of eight points in the game today, shot was like three of 11, wasn't good. Two of his three made shots were in like the last four minutes of the game, and it was a tight game. So Gary Trent Jr. made some big time shots in big time moments down the stretch. Raptors win this fourth quarter. Look, 25 22 in one quarter in the first. 24-22 in the second quarter, 21-19 in the third quarter, and 30-28 in the fourth. Raptors win that 30-28, and they win 97-94 over the Indiana Pacers. Lots of great performances in this game, and one that we haven't seen much of this year. Svima Luke, and we'll talk about a specific play of his that, oh boy, oh boy, it was a mean slam for Svima Luke. But let's get to the top here. Scotty Barnes, you could say the MVP in this game today. And today? No, it was last night, all right? Because, yeah, you didn't get a chance to. 21 points, 12 rebounds. And a dime for Scotty Barnes. He was fantastic in the paint. 9 of 17 from the field. 3 of 6 from the free throw line. So not great there. Took 1-3. Missed the 3. Had a steal in the game. I mean, every time Scotty goes out there and he drops some stuff like this, I just shake my head and go, wow. Like, this guy's on our team. It's pretty wild. It's pretty fantastic stuff, too. And the great thing about Scotty, we're talking about it all year with OG so far, is... You know what you're going to get defensively from Scotty Barnes. You're going to get active. You're going to get all over the place. He's going to he's going to cause turnovers all day long. He had a steal in the game today. But you didn't know what you were going to get offensively from him. And he's been a very, very good offensive player, more or less in the paint in the mid-range. His mid-range jumper is so damn underrated, it's crazy, right? We look at his, his post moves and his stuff in the paint, but... He's quietly been a very, very sound mid-range jump shooter. And it's very nice to watch for Scotty Barnes. And very confident. 
right? You know, a lot of times when people are looking to pass, looking to pass, and they just take a shot, it's usually a disaster because they weren't ready to shoot. Scotty, he's always ready to shoot, but he's surveying his, all, all his options. It's pretty remarkable stuff for the 20-year-old kid. Fred Van Vliet, 16 points, 6 boards, 4 dime shots, 6 of 14. But again, he made some big-time shots in the second half. And it was 2 of 7 from 3-point range, 2 steals, and a block for Freddie Van Vliet. Now, OG Anobi didn't have the prolific offensive game. He had 15 points, 5 boards, 5 dimes. But he shot 6 of 13, was 3 of 7 from 3. That ain't bad at all. The fact that Scotty Barnes took the most shots in the Raptors today, it tells you what the, the confidence they're having in him, his confidence, and the way Nick Nurse is running this offense. He sees what Scotty is doing. He sees he can hold his own offensively. So he's like, hey, give him the ball. Spread the ball. Move, move it around. You're going to get looks. You know? And OG also had a, a steal and a block in the game. Now let's get to see my high look, everybody. Because as much as Scotty was great in the double-double, Svi Mihailuk, who really hasn't done a whole lot to start the year. You know, we looked at him as like a Matt Thomas, but better, you know, heading into this season. But Svi Mihailuk was on fire last night. Not only did he shoot 6 of 10, he took 10 shots, but he shot 60%. He was 2 of 2 from the line, was 2 of 4 from 3-point range, had 16 points, 4 boards, couple dimes off the bench. Svi Mihailuk, have a day, young fella. And that, whoa, let's talk about that dunk. Let's talk about going behind the back and then going the left hand throw down. I don't know who it was that jumped to contest it, but my God, Svi Mihailuk puts him on an absolute poster. Highlight real stuff from Svi Mihailuk. Fantastic stuff from him. The Raptors overall, look, offensively, it wasn't pretty. It wasn't pretty for both teams offensively, but you grind it out defensively and you get a win and you get the big time buckets when you need them. Right? Gary Trent Jr. only had the eight points, but two of his big-time buckets happened late in the fourth quarter when you needed buckets. So I, I, this team is incredible. The, the way they're playing, the energy, the confidence, it's off the charts. And this is without Pascal Siakam. It's pretty remarkable stuff, guys. Now let's get to the stats with this game, all right? Raptors only shot 42% from the field. As I, as I said, you know, offensively, you didn't have a lot going. 34% from three, 67% from the free throw line. An ugly day offensively. However, the Indiana Pacers only shot 43% from the field, or 30% from three-point range, and 69% from the free throw line, all right? Now let's get to the stats that it's pretty... It watches... Holy smokes. Words are tough, I swear. You know, I know it's Halloween and everyone's having a great time. Get them to speak. All right, here we go. The Raptors were plus eight on the boards. Plus four on the offensive boards. And it, you know, it's crazy, everybody. I mean, we all, we talked, if you guys were around last year, first off, I applaud you for sticking around through that abysmal season. Second of all, we talked all year long about rebounding being a problem. Right, they bring in Kem Birch and it gets a little bit better. But watching Boucher and Aaron Baines go at it, I mean, it was a, it was just, it was painful. It was flat out painful to watch. Almost every given night so far this year, the Raptors are out rebounding their opponents because they want it. Plus eight in the glass, plus four in the offensive boards, beautiful. And second chance points off of those offensive boards, plus six in second chance points. You make it happen. Points off of turnovers. Raptors were plus eight in the points off of turnovers category. Again, nothing really stood out too significantly in, the, in that sense. But the big time shots late in this game from, some, from the Toronto Raptors was just remarkable. Big time nights from Scotty. Svi Mihailuk big time off the bench. Gary Trent Jr. made some big time buckets. Fred Van Vliet made some big time shots. And you won a basketball game. Clutch shots. You, you love to see it. All right now. It is not going to get any easier. I mean, it doesn't get much easier than a 1-5 in five Pacers team, but you now head to Madison Square Garden. Okay, the New York Knicks are a team that's absolutely buzzing to start the season. And they're a damn good basketball team. And MSG is not an easy place to play, even when they're not good. But they are phenomenal right now. And that place is always, always on fire. So it's going to be a tough one. The Raptors played Boston in their home opener at TD Garden, which is a very hostile environment. But is there anything like playing at MSG? I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. That game is tomorrow night. It's a 730 tip-off there as the Raptors look for their fourth consecutive victory. And at the very least, 
to have a winning road trip, which would be phenomenal, all right? So you know what, guys? That is going to do it for this one. If you enjoyed the video and enjoyed the game last night, smack that like button. I do appreciate that. Hit the subscribe button. If you've not done so already, guys, comment down below thoughts on the video. Thoughts on the game. Would you like, would you not like from yesterday's game for the Toronto Raptors? By the way, in the comments also, type in Scotty for Rookie of the Year because it's going to happen. Comment that stuff down there to let everyone know that it's going to happen because Scotty for Rookie of the Year is, is, is going to happen. All right? Uh, where are we? Twitter is down below for myself. Follow up, send me a DM to like great stuff, guys. The Instagram link is down below as well. So follow up there if you have not done so already. And I will talk to you guys Leafs edition on Tuesday as they host the Vegas Golden Knights. A very tough test for the Toronto Maple Leafs at Scotiabank Arena. At 7, I believe it's a 7 o'clock puck drop there as they look to win their third consecutive game and go back to being above 500 where they should be. All right. And as for the Toronto Raptors, their next game is on uh, Monday, which is tomorrow, 7.30 tip-off against the New York Knicks. It's going to be a doozy. It's going to be a tough one, though. you got to dig in defensively, and you need some big-time shots. Scoring 97 against the Knicks is just not going to cut it. All right. So thank you guys so much for listening and watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. We'll talk to you guys then.